go on to question number three. So they say we've got a group of learners, right, that uh, decide to conduct an investigation to compare the boiling points of the first three haloalkanes, namely uh, chloromethane, chloroethane, and one chloropropane, right? So remember that therefore becomes our independent variable, right? Okay, um, and then they say, uh, oh, and we're given the boiling points, okay, that becomes our dependent. All right, so firstly, they say define the term boiling point. So please remember by definition, the boiling point is the temperature at which uh, the vapor pressure of a compound is equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay, All right, so uh, that is the definition. They say identify the independent variable, right? Remember, as I did say, what is our independent variable? That's the chain length, right? We can say that it is the chain length. Remember, they all have the same um, homologous or they belong to the same homologous series. Okay, so the only difference is the chain length there. Okay, so we can say chain length. Um, you, nothing wrong if you said uh, the molecular mass Okay, um, each one has got a different uh, molecular mass. All right, and of course, you can also de decide to use surface area. Okay, but uh, I think chain length should suffice. Right, and the dependent variable in this case, remember, boiling point depends on the chain length. So that is um, our dependent variable. Right, so that would be a boiling point. And then um, they say the controlled variable. Now, what is it that we kept the same, right? The fact that they all come from the same homologous series, isn't it? Okay, so uh, we can say the homologous series, uh, or you can say uh, the functional group. Okay, I think that would also suffice, okay? And all, you can also even mention uh, the type of intermolecular force, right? And uh, nothing wrong with that. Right, so on the next one, uh, we're going to say, um, so they say write down a suitable investigation, investigative question, right? Now remember, <clears throat> what a, a, an investigative question needs to do is that it needs to relate the, fun the, the independent variable to the dependent variable, right? So what we then do is, and it must be a an open question, right? So meaning that you cannot answer the question with just a simple yes or no, right? So uh, let's make an example. Uh, let's say, um, what is the relationship, okay, of a uh, chain length? Uh, versus uh, the boiling point, okay? Or you can say, how does boiling point affect, or, or how is boiling point affected by the chain length, okay? So in this case, please remember to have a question mark at the end, okay? Uh, how is boiling point affected by the chain length, right? Or you can say uh, the chain length of uh, hello alkanes, all right, since we've got hello alkanes in this case, all right. All right, so the next question they say to us, um, chloromethane is highly flammable. So they are giving us that statement. Okay, and they say, write down one precaution that should be taken when working with this substance in the laboratory. All right, so one thing that we know is that we must keep it away from open flames, right? Of course, because they've told us that it is flammable, all right? Uh, or in this case, we must say that uh, we must use a water bath, okay, in order to heat it. So that is the one precaution that we must always use. Right, so the next question, 3.5, they say, which one of these substances, A, B, or C, has the lowest vapor pressure? 
Okay, give a reason for the answer. So please remember, we said the higher the strength of intermolecular force, uh, the lower the vapor pressure. So they wanted to find out which one has got the lowest vapor pressure. Well, definitely it's going to be compound C, right? And they said um, we must give a reason, okay, it has the highest or it has the strongest intermolecular forces. Uh, the strongest intermolecular force. Or you can also mention the fact that um, it has uh, the highest boiling point, right? Um, yeah, I think those would be acceptable. Right, let's go to the next one. They say the learners find one chloroputane in the laboratory. Okay, how would the boiling point of one chloroputane compare to that of one chloropropane? Uh, Definitely, it would have a higher boiling point, isn't it? So they said, right, only higher than, uh, lower than, or equal to. Uh, definitely, it would have a higher boiling point. They said, explain the answer to 3.6 by referring to the type of intermolecular force, right? Uh, the strength and uh, the energy. All right. So um, remember, uh, they, they, they told us what we should actually uh, give this in terms of, right? So um, we can say that an increase in chain length, right? Okay, so an increase or a higher chain length, okay, an increase in chain length will increase the strength. Notice we know that these are going to be um, uh, London forces together with a uh, dipole dipole uh, will increase the strength. Okay, we can say that it increases the strength of our intermolecular forces. All right. Okay, so we know in this case they said uh, we need to mention intermolecular forces, the strength. Okay, so in we know that more energy is required. Note, ladies and gents, to separate okay, the molecules. We are separating molecules and not breaking uh, uh, chains in that case. So we are separating, uh, to separate the molecules of one chloroputane. Okay, and so that's why it will have a high boiling point. All right, um, ladies and gents, uh, so I will uh, go on to the next question, which is 3.8. So they say to us, the learners decide to do another investigation with compounds J and K. All right, so there we go. We've got compound J and compound K. We've got butane, which is an alkane, and we've got a uh, two uh, butene, all right, which is J there. Right, now they say bromine water is used to distinguish between compounds J and K by adding it to each compound in two separate test tubes, right? They say the learners observe that one compound decolorizes the bromine water immediately, while the other substance only reacts after placing the test tube in direct sunlight. Okay, so they, they said write down uh, the letter J or K of the compound that will immediately decolorize bromine water. So please remember that uh, in this case, unsaturated hydrocarbons uh, will decolorize bromine water quickly. Okay, it's a spontaneous reaction, so that will definitely be J. They say the reason that the other substance 
only reacts uh, when placed in direct sunlight. So ladies and gents, please remember that when it comes uh, to uh, alkanes, in that case, um, uh, they need to have uh, energy that is uh, added into it, okay? So the, the sunlight actually supplies the activation energy that is required, okay? So uh, they said the reason why it, it, it reacts when placed in direct sunlight is that uh, sunlight, okay, so sunlight will provide the amount of energy required okay or you can say the minimum energy required okay which is what we call you do you remember what we call uh, uh, the minimum energy required right that's activation energy right so the activation energy Okay, uh, for the reaction to uh, to take place. Right, so I'm going to, uh, you can finish that statement there, uh, but that's the reason why we place it in direct sunlight. So the next one, they say the molecular formula of the organic product formed in the test tube um, containing uh, compound J. Right, so remember this is where we are going to uh, use in this case so they said the molecular formula of the uh, product so we're going to actually have something that looks like this so we're going to break that pi bond there the second bond okay so we still have these guys looking like that and so which means bromide ions would actually go on to carbon number two and three. So that's what the molecular formula would look like. Okay, and um, so at 3.8, actually, uh, look at me writing the structural formula. So that would be CH, uh, C, C4, that would be C4, that would be H, um, that would be H8, isn't it? and br2 that's the molecular formula that we would have all right and finally they say to us a balanced chemical equation uh when uh rather when compound k undergoes complete combustion right so we're going to take k right which is butane so remember so we're going to have butane c4h10 plus Complete combustion reacts, it reacts with oxygen. We're going to form carbon dioxide plus H2O. All right, but please remember we need to balance that reaction. So C4H10, I've got four carbons on this side. So that would give me four carbons. 10 hydrogens means that I'll multiply that by five. But now for oxygen, I've got four times two, which is eight. I've got 5 times 1, which is 5, and that gives me 13, right? So that means that this will be 13 over 2 times 2, which will give me 13. But remember, we cannot have a um, fraction as our coefficient, so we're going to multiply everything by 2. So that would be 2 times 1, which would be 2 there. Uh, 13 over 2 times 2 gives me 13. Uh, 4 times 2 gives me 8, and 5 times 2 gives me 10. Right, so that is what we will have, ladies and gents, in terms of uh, our balanced equation. Right, so we are going to leave it there for question 3. I hope that this was uh, brilliantly answered. Okay, uh, I hope that uh, you understood. Right, let's go on to question 4.